we did uh, an extensive uh, amount of work into this draft. It's a, it's a challenging draft. And, and as we've gone through a number of, of prospects and players and uh, first and foremost, a big thanks to Alessandro Benin, our, our uh, European scout. He's been absolutely fantastic and terrific. And uh, we wouldn't have been able to um, go down this road to find a player like uh, Nico Hutenin without, you know, his help and guidance throughout it also. Uh, but to, to be able to get a, a player like Nico, it's, it's just something that it's very difficult to do what he does. And he scores goals. Uh, it's the hardest game. He's had great success at every level uh, scoring goals. He plays what I like to think is a, a North American style game. He's, he's big, strong, physical. Um, like, I, like you said, his ability to find the back of the net speaks for itself. But I think even more so his his playmaking, his deception, the way he finds guys, the way he uses his body to, to protect the puck and, and, and hang on to pucks and make plays. Uh, I think his hockey IQ is, is tops. And, and uh, But again, I, I think the way we want to play in Everett, uh, he brings an element of size and strength and uh, will bolster our, our uh, offense and our, our uh, power play up front. So we're, we're really excited to have him, and, and I know he's excited to come over. In what ways can his qualities make sense in how much they're compatible with this program and the potential he has to become a pro down the road? Well, I think it's, it's totally, you know, for his opportunity to be a pro, it's, uh, you know, he, he, there's some areas of his game he's got to get better at. And, and with all our players, we talk about that all the time. And it's our job to help him with those uh, de deficiencies and, and try to uh, get them better and, and overcome them. And, and the, the biggest thing when I talked with Nico, you know, about it is, is he's identified the areas he needs to get better at. And I think that's the number one you know, thing you're looking for in a player is someone who, who doesn't kind of uh, code around it and just say, you know, oh, no, I think my, my skating's good. Or I think my shot's good. Or I think my defense, like he knows the areas of the game and he's willing and wanting to work at that because he wants to be an NHL hockey player. And, and when I spoke to him, you know, when I asked him what his goals were was to play in the National Hockey League, you know, that there right away from a coaching standpoint is exactly what, what you're looking for. So uh, I know he's going to put in the work. We're going to put in the work with him. We, we, we told him that it's a, it's a two way street. We always say here in Everett and, and, uh, but I know he'll, he'll compliment our group very well. And, and I'm sure our guys will be excited to, to have him come over and, put, and play with them. The booming shot helps, but also you touched on the essence of playing physical and embracing the North American style of game how much does that work to his advantage with the road he has ahead to become a pro well i think it, it's huge you know we obviously the difference is mike is that he plays on an olympic sheet over in, in europe versus north american sheet which is uh, ice rink which is a lot smaller but like for him his, his wall work his compete along the walls his his, his battling like uh he he's ready to step in and that's what we were looking for in this this situation was a player that was able to come in and, and help us up front and, and fill um, a hole for us, you know, that we're looking for. We lost a lot of goal scoring last year with um, Ethan Renier leaving and, and uh, Cole Fonstad and obviously Gage Gonsalves. And, you know, it, uh, we, we need to find ways to continue to generate offense and put pucks in the net. And I, I feel Nico with, with all his elements of the game that uh, we, we thought his strengths were that it would be very beneficial for us to select him in that second overall pick. And, and I said, even more so was his excitement to come to the Everett, to, the, to come to the CHL, uh, you know, and, and uh, I got a chance to meet his family as well there and, and everything was, was, was good, you know, and, and they're excited and I'm sure a little nervous, like anything, you know, letting their son come 5,000 miles or so, whatever it is across the ocean. But I know he's excited and he's, he's trading hard, working hard. And, and, uh, you know, come September one where I can't wait to see him when he gets there here on the ice for our training camp. What kind of an impact can his arrival and the return of Michael Goot make here for this group? Yeah, two two really good hockey players. Um, obviously, having Michael Goot come back um, was fantastic. We all know uh, Michael's personality on and off the ice, and and uh, what he can do on the ice. We, we we know he's a fantastic hockey player, and is going to be again a, a big piece to our puzzle uh, as we try to put together this year's squad. And and uh, he's going to be. Um, a big factor and someone that we're going to lean on a lot is, is Michael Gut and to be able to compliment whether or not they, 
they play together to start or, or, or whatnot. I know Nico, if, if guys can get him the puck, he'll, he can, he can put the puck in the net. And, and so, you know, there might be some, um, some really good uh, similarities and, and be able to help each other both benefit from, from possibly playing together. But I know both guys are going to be leaned on to, to, to play minutes for us this year. And, and uh, you know, not only help with the offense, but also to be responsible on the defensive side and, and to play hard without the puck. And that's where they got to continue to work on. So uh, without a doubt, I'm excited to have both those guys.